All right, it's 10 o'clock, so let's go ahead and get started. I am J. Michael Morelli here. I'll be riding along with Dylan today in this webinar. Um, so there is a Q&A module. If you're joining us via Zoom conference, go ahead and click that Q&A button on the screen. Any questions you have, feel free to ask us. I can answer them uh, right away, or I can pass them up to Dylan if it's something that I can't answer or something you want him to show again on the screen. If you're joining us on Facebook, just ask your question in the comments there. I'll be viewing that on Facebook as well. So with that, uh, Dylan, go ahead and take it away. Awesome. Thanks so much, Mo. Um, yeah, good morning, everybody. My name is Dylan, and I'm the software and video educator here at On One. Um, I'm really excited to give you guys a tour of On One Effects today. Um, specifically today, we're actually going to be going over how to use On One Effects as a standalone application. And also, if you're a Lightroom or a Photoshop user, we're going to be going over how to quickly use it as a plugin with those applications. Again, um, just to touch on what Mo was saying, the webinar is recorded. So if you need to sneak out at any time or you, know, you miss a section, um, we're going to upload that later today to YouTube. So um, feel free to browse through that if you um, miss anything. Um, a little bit about On One Effects. Um, you can use On One Effects as a standalone application, or you can have it bundled together inside of On One Photo Raw with all of our other um, photo processing modules. So inside of PhotoRaw, you'd have browse, develop, layers, resize, effects, and then HDR and pano, all together inside of one standalone application. But for the sake of this webinar, I'm going to give you guys um, a little insight on how to use On One Effects as a standalone application um, and how to use it to enhance your landscape photos. So a little bit about On One Effects as an as a application I like to think of On1 Effects as sort of the creative engine um, to our software. Um, whereas Develop, you sort of set the basic overall tone and sort of set the basic tone and color for your photo. I like to think of Effects as the creative process throughout your photo processing. So, you know, it's sort of where you take your photo to the next level and really give it that life that you wanted um, to really make your photo pop. So, throughout this webinar, I'm going to show you guys how to set um, basic tone inside of Effects and also how to um, use different filters. I'm going give, to be giving you guys um, some of my favorite filters to use on landscape photos. And then I'm going to be showing you how to use effects as a plugin for Lightroom and Photoshop. So to get started here, I'm just going to open up effects. And once you open up effects, you have a screen that's going to basically, you know, your start screen. So you can either drag a photo there to get started or you can just simply hit open. And once you browse your photo, you can just simply click on it. Um, make sure it's the right one. That's the, the one I'm looking for, so I'll hit open. And it'll come up with the dialogue here. And this is basically just asking you what you want to edit. So you're going to be editing a copy of that photo with settings applied. And then um, there's these copy options down here, which if you expand them, you can choose which file you want to edit. I usually just choose JPEG because I'm actually not dealing with any layers inside of On One Effects. So once you have that figured out, just hit Edit, and it'll import your photo into Effects. And like I was saying earlier, the webinar is being recorded. So if you do need to you know, jolt for, any, for any, any reason or you miss a step, um, feel free to come back on YouTube, and you can view it in its entirety. OK, so now we have our photo opened up inside of Effects. And I'll make this full screen for you guys. And um, for those of you who are familiar with On One Effects or On One Photo Raw, um, this screen is probably pretty, pretty familiar. It's basically On One Photo Raw without any of the other modules on the side. But if you aren't familiar with um, On One Photo Raw or On One Effects, I'm just going to give you sort of a brief overview of um, the screen you're looking at right now. And for those of you who are familiar, this may be a little bit of a refresher. So, in this screen, you have uh, your left pane here, which is basically your tools that you can use throughout the editing process. You have your, you know, your crop tool, where you can resize your photo to crop it. Um, you have your local adjustment brush and your local adjustment gradient. Um, you have your masking um, tools here, which they aren't actually, um, you, they won't be available until you actually add a filter or a local adjustment, as you see. Um, and then you have your retouch uh, tools down here. And we're going to in get into a few of these later in the webinar. But just for the sake of showing you guys where the, the tools are, um, this is basically your toolbar for your um, effects engine. And to the right of that, we actually have our presets and we have our filters. 
So presets are basically just um, unique stylized presets that are used from combining different filters together. So um, let's look through here and find a nice preset for our photo. And to make your presets bigger, you can actually just click this button here, and it'll make them larger. And now you can browse through pre previews of the thumbnails of your presets. And once you find one, you can just simply click on it, and it'll add that look to your photo. And you'll notice that once I added that preset, it added all of these different filters. Well, to, to use a preset, basically you're actually just adding um, preset filters that are added onto your photo. Well, the great thing about presets in effects is that you can go back and actually edit any of these um, filters that are added on through the presets. So you can adjust opacity, um, the amount of anything, any control or slider on here um, to readjust that preset as you please. So let's just reset that. And are there any questions at this point in time, Mo? Um, no, there's no real questions um, on anything. So why don't you go ahead and continue on. But just to remind everyone, I'll be answering questions in the Q&A module. And if you're on Facebook, feel free to add those questions into the comments thread there. And uh, otherwise, go ahead, Dylan, you're doing great. Awesome. So yeah, like I was saying, um, these are your presets. Um, so these are basically just preset styles of different filters added onto a photo and then sort of bundled into a file that you can add onto your photo. Um, the filters pane is basically the same thing, but it's um, actually just using those, those individual filters and then sort of um, messing with the controls in them. So if I click on my HDR look here, you're going to have exaggerated edges and tone, glow. And so these are basically just preset styles for that um, HDR look filter. And then you can click on one, and it'll add that look and that filter to your photo. And then, um, obviously, you have a preview of your image on the middle. You have um, different controls to where you can zoom in. And then you, to the right, you have your navigation, which is basically the same thing as this top part here. You have your levels, which is your histogram. And then you have your info, which just holds all of the camera and lens information um, for your shot. Below that is where you can start adding and creating uh, the look for your photo. So this is where you basically can add um, those 23 filters onto your photo. You can add as many of those as you want, as many as you please. You can you know, mask and blend them together. So the creativity um, factor is really up to you. Um, so like I was saying earlier, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of how to set basic tone for your photo inside of effects. And then I'm going to show you um, some of my favorite filters to use on landscape photos. And then we'll also make a preset for um, you know, a, landscape a landscape photo. And then I'll add that in the description for you guys as well. So um, for this photo here, um, what I'm basically going to start out doing with my shots is I like to just go to crop. And then I like to um, you know, just set a nice crop point for my photo. And I've actually just been cropping in 4.5 4 lately. I don't know why, but it's kind of just been my, my jam. So I'm going to keep that. And we'll get a nice crop on our shot here. And I'm just kind of trying to line up. I've, I've noticed in my shots lately, at least, that when I sort of line up my leading lines with the corner here, like if the leading line comes straight from the corner, it adds for a nice, I don't know, interesting perspective for your photo. Um, so I have this nice leading line leading into my corner here, and um, I have sort of the area that I want to remove cropped. Well, the next thing I like to do instead of crop is I'm actually going to use my leveling tool here. And there's not really a horizon line that's straight, but there is some heat coming off this road here that I'm actually going to use. So I can just click and drag, and it'll straighten my photo for me. Didn't really need too much straightening, but um, you can't really tell, and so it's always good to just make sure your photo is nice and straight. So I'll just hit Enter, and now my photo is cropped. And so um, what I like to do next is basically I just like to set the overall basic tonality for my photo. And I don't have develop here, so a good way to do that instead of effects is just to add your tone enhancer. And the tone enhancer is basically um, your, your tone and color without the color. So you have your exposure, your contrast, your highlights, shadows, you know, all of the basic tonality settings for your shot. And so same thing as inside of develop, when I'm editing, I like to hold down my J key to show my true white and true black points. So if I boost this all the way up, you'll notice that there's a bunch of red spots in my photo. And that's all of the true white without any detail. So it looked like there wasn't any in my shot. So I'm just going to actually pull down the exposure just a tad to bring back some detail in the mountain and the clouds. And then I'll keep 
um, holding down my J key, and I'm actually going to pull down on the black slider to give some nice true black to my shot. So you see that little blue in there? That's actually true black without any detail. So the red on the photo, if you're holding down your J key, is your true white without any detail, and the, the blue points are your true black without any detail. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to boost the shadows a little bit to bring back some life into those darker areas. And so you'll see by just turning this on and off, it hasn't really done a whole lot, but we've sort of set a basic tonality for our photo, so we're not just staring at a raw image file. So another great thing about on one effects is that you can continually to just add as many effects or filters as you want onto your photo. So you know, just like inside of develop when you're setting your basic tone and color, you know, if you want to set your color, you can just add a filter, and there's an incredibly powerful um, color tool called the Color Enhancer. So you can click on that, and this is basically anything you need to deal with color inside of your photo. This is going to be your go-to filter. So as you can see, there's a ton of different controls in here. Um, what I like to do whenever, whenever I'm setting um, color for my photo, I don't know why, but I just I pull down on the saturation point, and then I just stare at my shot, and I just pull up on the saturation until I have like a nice saturation point. I'm always scared I'm going to oversaturate my photos, which if you do, that's fine. You know, if that's your look, that's totally fine. I'm just always worried about that. So now that I have my saturation point set, um, I'm actually just going to warm this photo up a little bit just to get rid of sort of that blue cast on my sky. Probably right about there. So now if we turn this on and off, we've set sort of a nice saturation point and got rid of some of that blue cast on our sky right there. So now I'm going to show you a few of my, you know, I guess since we've set the overall basic tonality for our photo and the tone and color, I'm actually going to show you guys a few of my favorite filters to use when editing landscape shots and how you can mask and blend them and sort of just um, stack them on top of each other to create a really nice, unique look for your shot. So one of my favorite landscape filters, definitely hands down, is probably the sunshine filter. And the sunshine filter is basically just going to emulate sunshine within your photo. I like it because it seems to bring out um, the subject a lot more. So let's just click on it. So let's add a filter and let's add sunshine. And you'll notice that that sort of dimmed down these darker areas and then kind of brought to life that mountain part. Well, what it's doing is it's brightening the highlights in your shot and darkening the shadows, which on a sunshine day, that's probably the look that would be going through your lens. So once we have that sunshine filter on there, another one of my favorite filters to add is dynamic contrast. And what dynamic contrast is going to do is it's going to bring out micro contrast into your shot to provide detail. So once we add dynamic contrast, you'll notice that it applies that dynamic contrast look to the entire shot. You know, it's applied to the road, the trees here, the mountain, and the clouds. Well, I only really want that, uh, that filter to be applied to the, the mountain here. So what I can do is I can zoom in, and this button right here, um, the little rectangle with the circle in the middle, that's your, those are your masking options. So if you click that, you have your mask view right here. You have invert, reset, copy, your luminosity mask, and view. So if you view that, it, the entire mask is white. So the thing about masks is white reveals and black conceals. So with this being all white, it's revealing this entire dynamic contrast filter onto my shot. So a way to reverse that is just simply hit invert. And now it's black, and that entire dynamic contrast filter is being removed from my entire shot. So like I was saying earlier, with these different um, masking refinement tools, we have our masking brush here. Well, the masking brush is how you're going to remove or add different filters from specific areas on your photo. So I'm actually going to increase my brush size with just using the bracketed keys on my keyboard. And you'll notice in the middle of that, there's a little minus sign. Well, that's because it's, it's set to paint out, so I'm actually if I were to brush something, there's nothing on here, so I wouldn't be able to paint out anything. So we're actually going to go up to the mode here, and we're actually going to go to Paint In. And another way you can do that is by simply holding down Shift and hitting X on your keyboard, and you'll notice that it switches from a minus to a plus. Well, you have other options up here as well. You have your size, which um, to change that, just simply use the bracketed keys in your keyboard, and you can change it um, almost instantly. And I'm a, you also have feathering as well, and I'm a huge fan of soft brushes, so I usually have that at 100. And then you have your opacity. Um, this is actually your perfect brush, which I'm not going to touch too much on to, um, in this webinar, but it's, also, it's a pretty powerful tool if you are using it for masking. Then you have your brush settings. You can invert your mask, or you can reset. 
So now that we've gone over basically everything about your masking brush, to paint on this dynamic contrast onto here, simply make sure you have your brush set to paint in, and now, or set to paint in, and you have your mask inverted, and now you can just simply paint on that dynamic contrast onto your mountain. And you'll notice that that little white spot is the actual mask to where you're painting in. And if you want to see um, actually, you know, where that's actually at, I'll just hit Surreal. And if I turn that on and off, you'll see that it's only applying that look to my mountain. I'm actually a huge fan of natural, so I'm just going to actually click natural. So that's, that's another one of my favorite filters to add onto landscapes because it's, I like it just because you can make, um, you know, your subject areas pop a lot more and it works amazing on mountains and rocks um, like you can see here. So if you have a mountain in the background and it seems a little bit soft, I'd, you know, grab some dynamic contrast and brush it on there because um, it'll really make that um, subject come to life. So now that we've gone over a few of my filters here, um, you'll notice that by adding these filters, you're actually kind of stacking them as layers. Well, a nice way to stay organized with these is you can go up to Window, and you can click Solo Mode, so that now, excuse me, every time you add a filter, it's going to keep, so if I add a filter here, it's going to keep them um, all, all collapsed so that you stay organized. And if you want to go back into one, it'll, if you open it up, it'll collapse all of the other ones so that, you're never having, so that you're never having any more than one filter open at a time. I actually don't really mind having that because I can just scroll down and edit. So I'm actually just going to turn that off. Um, but great tool if you want to stay organized with your different effects. So I actually added a filter, and I added a split tone filter. And that's another one of my favorite filters when it comes to um, landscapes. And basically, your split tone filter is you're just separating the different colors in your highlights and your shadows. So um, an easier way to understand split toning is really just to use these preset styles here. And you know, like with pretty much every filter, maybe besides a couple, there's, there's a preset style for every single filter. So um, if you want to know what that look looks like, just simply hit this More Styles button, and you can scroll over, and it'll change the look of your photo and give you a preview of what that um, preset style is doing to your shot. Well, there was that blue overcast on my shot here, so I'm actually just going to go to um, Warm and sort of just give it like a nice little warm look, um, just to give it that unique style. So now that I've, I've set that um, on there, and we've gone over a few of a few ways to add different filters and to you know mask and blend them on top of your photo, I want to show you how you can actually use um, local adjustments to do sort of the same thing. So in your local adjustments, this is where you're basically going to be setting um, separate tonalities and color points for your for your shot in specific areas. So to explain further what I mean by that is say I want to sort of subdue this foreground area of this road here and sort of just bring all of the attention to my mountain here, I can do that easily by just adding a simple local adjustment layer. So by default, once you add a local adjustment layer, it's going to be set to darken. You'll notice that this exposure is set to negative one. I always just like to click darken just to make sure. Uh, I'm not really sure why, but so I'm going to make sure it's set to darken so that the exposure is turned down. And like I was saying earlier with these um, tools, you have your local adjustment gradient, which is basically going to be masking um, this local adjustment layer by using a gradient. So if I drop that down, and I'll just turn it around, you'll notice that it really subdues that road right here. Um, almost makes it look like there was a cloud above here, right here, and then this mountain um, sort of had clear skies. So if I turn that on and off, You'll notice that that's applying that, um, that lack of exposure into my road area here, but not applying it to the top of my mountain. So local adjustment layer is a great way to add you know, specific details or um, basic tonality enhancements to specific areas on your shot. And also, you can, just go, you know, you can go in and def deal with a different temperature, the saturation if you wanted to, you know, all of those things um, to really enhance um, little areas on your photo or large areas on your photo. So now that we've sort of set a basic, um, I guess, sort of look for our shot, I'm going to show you how you can create a preset with all of these different um, filters and effects applied to our shot. So creating a preset is incredibly easy in On One Effects. Just simply go up to, um, well, first you have to have um, styles added to your shot. So make sure you have you know, at least one filter or one local adjustment layer applied. And you can simply go to Settings and then Save Settings as a preset. 
And this is where you can save um, different settings as presets as well as to add them into different categories. So what I want to do is I'm just going to add a new category. And I'm going to go to Favorite Landscape Effects. And I'm just going to make sure that um, my adjustable gradient tool, my effect settings is applied. Um, you can turn off the adjustable gradient tool. That's just telling you that that local adjustment gradient that I put on before is going to be applied, which if you use this as a preset, you can always go back and turn that off or go back in and mess with the, um, the local adjustment gradient tool to actually fine tune it where you need it on your shot. So I'm actually just going to leave that on there and I'll include a link to this preset into um, the bio or the, not the bio, into the, um, YouTube um, description. So I'll actually just name that favorite landscape effects. And then I'll just click OK. And now you'll notice on my left hand side, if I click that and open that up, I have my um, preset already created. So that's basically um, sort of an overview on how to use um, Elmo effects as a standalone application. Um, are there any questions, Mo, so far? Uh, no, there's no questions, but uh, just another reminder to people, go ahead and ask your questions in the comments on Facebook or ask it in the Q&A module. There have been a few that have come through that I've answered. Um, but this webinar is being recorded. We'll have it posted up on our YouTube channel, on our blog. We'll have that done this afternoon. So if you have to duck out, it'll be up this afternoon for you to uh, go back and take a look at. So go awesome. ahead, Dylan. Thanks, Will. Um, so yeah, so that's basically sort of a, a basic overview of how to use on one effects as a standalone application. Um, like I said, there's tons of different filters in here. And really, the easiest way to learn what they do is just, just click on them and see. Um, like I said, a ton of them have different um, preset styles in there. So if you like, what does a photo filter do? Click on it, and it'll have this blue color here. So you'll see, like, oh, there's a blue filter being added to my shot. If you don't want it, just click out of it, and then you can you know, go back and add different ones. So um, those are my, you know, basically my free, or my favorite filters to add onto a landscape photo, and then some local adjustments on how to sort of subdue foreground areas. Um, so now I'm going to move on to, just cancel out of that. So I'm actually just going to move on to how to use Lightroom as a plugin if you're coming from Photoshop or Lightroom. So if you're using um, Lightroom, if you're a Lightroom user, and you want to use effects as a plugin, it's incredibly, incredibly easy. So so to use on one effects as a plugin in Lightroom, um, all you really need to do um, is just, so actually I'm just going to set a basic tone for this photo just because I want to crop this out. This area is bugging me. I shot this, and I wish I would have zoomed in more. So I'm just going to crop this out real quick. There we go, and then we'll straighten as well. OK, so now that we have sort of um, just, we've set an overall look in Lightroom. And say Lightroom doesn't have all of the creative filters and effects that you can add onto your photo, and it's lacking in their effects engine, and you want to use on one effects, super incredibly easy. Just have your photo, whatever photo it may be, right click it, just simply right click, edit in and then on one effects standalone 2018. And a dialog will pop up. This is edit photo with on one effects 2018. This is basically just telling you that it's editing a copy with Lightroom adjustments applied. So you're basically editing a copy of that original photo with that cropping or whatever um, enhancements you make onto that photo applied. So let's just click edit. And it'll pull up on one effects. And this dialog is going to pop up, and it's going to say, save as a re-editable smart photo. Um, Photoshop files types can be saved as a smart photo, which, is a which allows you to re-edit your settings at a later date. This is basically saying that a smart photo is going to keep your edits so that you can re-edit them. So it's basically keeping your edits in here non-destructive. I don't. I'd usually just click smart photo. But if you do want to go back and re-edit a photo, um, I would just use the smart photo feature. I'm just going to click normal photo here. And it'll pull up our shot instead of on one effects. And it's basically you know, the same screen as we had earlier. So 
what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to add a quick little filter onto here. And I'm actually going to add a LUT. And LUTs are actually lookup tables, which are basically preset styles that people use to enhance their photos. They kind of came from shooting um, digital film or digital um, cinema. And they kind of add uh, like a cinem cinematic look onto your shot, or you can add different preset styles. Um, I like to use them to add cinematic looks or black and white looks. Um, we actually have a ton of LUT, a ton of free LUTs on our website. I'll include an actual link to that in the description in the YouTube and also on the blog post. So stay tuned for those if you are looking to get a bunch of free LUTs um, for your on one effects because they're incredibly fun to play with. I've used them probably on every single photo that I edit in on one effects. So my favorite is my black and white category that I made. And I'm just going to scroll through here and find you know sort of a nice look. I like that sort of dark um, black and white look. So now that we have a filter applied to our photo, if we want to take it back into Lightroom, just simply click Done. And it'll save that um, photo, and it will add it right back into Lightroom, and you can edit it even further if you want to. So there you go. There's your shot already. So now that we've <clears throat> gone over how to use On One Effects as a standalone application and in Lightroom, I'm going to show you how you can use it in Photoshop, say to, say to maybe make like a nice graphic or a brochure or um, you know, a nice little postcard. Because it's incredibly easy to you know, sort of stylize your photo in On One Effects and then bring it back into Photoshop to add you know, some like text or um, other elements to it. So we have our shot here in Photoshop. And to access this shot inside of On One Effects, it's incredibly easy as well. So just go to File and then go to Automate, so Automate, and then just select, again, On One Effects Standalone. And it'll open up, again, right into On One Effects. And then you can start editing your um, shot to bring it back into Photoshop. So I'm actually just going to go here, and I'm going to add a filter. And sort of like the filter I added um, with the first shot, I'm actually going to add a tone enhancer. And I'm actually just going to click Auto and see what that looks like. OK, that's super bright. So let's just turn down the exposure. But I sort of like how the shadows and stuff are looking, so that's fine. And then let's just add another filter. And I'll add another LUT, because I love LUTs. So let's just add a nice. Let's add a nice cinematic look. So now that we have a nice, you know, cinematic look for our photo, it's kind of moody and dark. Um, we can hit. Um, let's actually add a nice border around it as well. That'll be nice when we're adding it to maybe like some text. So now that we have a border and sort of a cinematic look to our shot, I'm just gonna go back and hit done, and it will pull it right back into um, Photoshop as a new layer, and you can immediately get to adding stuff onto it. So there we go. Now it's added back into Photoshop. And say you want to send you know, a nice cool postcard to your, your mom or you know, some family, you can easily just grab this. And let's maybe just make a postcard for you know, maybe like Oregon waterfalls or something. So let's add some text to it. And let's go there. Then we can just move it around here. Oops. There we go. And so there you have it. You have a nice little postcard about Oregon waterfalls that you did in five seconds using On One Effects as a plugin and just simply adding some text onto it in Photoshop. So those are basically you know my 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 tips for using On One Effects as a standalone application. And then you know if you're coming from Lightroom or Photoshop and you want to use it as a plugin. It's incredibly easy. Um, so those are some steps on how to do it. Um, do we have any questions so far, Mo? No, you're doing good. There are no questions. I'm pretty much answering everything that's coming through. Um, this would be a good time to tell people that we can, if you're joining us via the Zoom conference, we can actually send you an email after this with a, uh, a link to the recorded webinar as well as those free LUT packs on our website. Um, there's also loyalty rewards on our website at onone.com slash loyalty. 
So uh, if you guys are looking for any uh, presets, a lot of you Photo Raw owners probably know about the loyalty rewards already. Um, anyone using effects, you might not know about it. The loyalty rewards area, there are lots of presets you can download for each month and some other goodies like textures um, and whatnot. So if you're joining us via Zoom, we will send you the recorded webinar link once it's posted, as well as the uh, LUT packs and the preset pack that Dylan, or preset, sorry, that Dylan was using here. And uh, that's all I got for you, Dylan. So it's all you. Awesome. Thanks so much, Mo. Yeah, like, was, like Mo was saying, um, the webinar is going to be recorded. So if you, do, if you did miss anything and you're just showing up, um, we're going to have this up on YouTube later today. So check that out. We'll also have the links um, in the description to um, the LUT packs and uh, the preset that I made. Um, if you are looking for future webinars, um, head on to onone.com slash webinars and feel free to sign up. Mo and I are going to have a bunch more um, each week to show you guys you know, awesome different effects and cool things that you can do in Photo Raw and all the other applications. So thanks again so much for joining me and uh, have a great day, guys.